Always fun to see the first snow of the season. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods in the capital city of Sacramento in California. And for us, starting off the season like this is always a promising sight, especially as we head into our wetter time of the year coming off of several months of dry weather. So this is the Silver Peak. This is just to the south of Yosemite, right along 395, where we've been tracking areas of snow showers throughout the course of our Sunday. Still have a winter weather advisory in place until 8, 830 tonight, where we can see some additional snow flurries right through the high country. Unfortunately, we're going to flip flop things because we're back to the heat by the end of the week and a lot of that snow will melt off. No ski resorts are open or anything at this point. Most of that starts up right around Thanksgiving if there's enough snow and they're able to actually make some snow overnight. So we'll look at that radar and satellite image and the counterclockwise circulation pretty evident here. The pull of that moisture just kind of tapering off as that low pressure system pushes off to the east back edge of that system is what's producing the lingering showers into our Sunday evening. Everything starts to wind down though overnight tonight. Just kind of nice to get a uh, fresh dusting of snow up there for the high country and that on the heels of just actually melting off a lot of that snow from the last water year, which by the way, ended September 30th. So yesterday, today, the beginning of our new water year, which could be a big one for us in terms of total rainfall that came in. This wasn't much and we usually don't get a whole lot in the month of September or the beginning of uh, October as well. Anywhere from about five one hundredths of an inch of rain to about a quarter of an inch or so. In fact, we were slightly above that for Sacra Sacramento International at 38 hundredths of an inch of rain, over half an inch of rain there for El Dorado Hill. So in some areas of those isolated areas, we did get a nice little uh, batch of rain coming through. As far as those totals just to the south, about a tenth of an inch or so, including areas just off to the San Francisco coastal areas for Fairfield and Beckerville about a tenth of an inch or so in rainfall. Heading up into the higher elevations, we uh, managed to squeak out about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of rain. Some of that mixed with snow at the very highest elevations, but for South Lake Tahoe and Truckee, closer to about 6,000 to 6,500 feet, that wasn't gonna be at the elevation that we actually saw snow. That was upwards of about 8,500 to 10,000 feet. And then as we head through the uh, central part of the Sacramento Valley and surrounding foothills, you can see we picked up anywhere from about a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of rain, although Oroville clocked in at about an inch of rain, all coming in with that weekend storm system that rolled through. So the first storm that rolled through for the fall season didn't do too much, but this one much more active. In fact, for parts of the Central Valley and just off to the west of I-5 near Woodland, you can see Saturday we had that funnel cloud come through. The National Weather Service confirming they got several reports of the funnel cloud and some active weather along with it. There were some special weather statements that were put out during the day. This is another picture. It's a little bit more fuzzy, but again, uh, submitting that photo in where you can see the evidence of that funnel cloud near Woodland, which by the way, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's close to Davis. UC Davis is the university that's by there. Here's a look at what's left from that weather system. Not much left, clearing skies coming our way for tomorrow. But when we have those cool pockets of air and the clearing skies overnight, that typically means a pretty chilly start to our morning with lows falling to about 50 down low for the valley. We'll be in the 20s up top for this year. But big changes coming our way this week. Our water year starts today. Last year was an epic year. Some of the ski resorts are reporting the most snow that they've ever had on record. Showers ending overnight and then temperatures are going to be much warmer. So a lot of that snow that we saw is going to start to melt, as I mentioned. Here's the wrap up of September, and it was a cool one for us. One of the coolest that we've seen since 2007. We had 20 days below average. You see all the blue up there on the map here, only eight days above average. The warmest days, 95 degrees is where we topped out on the 9th and 10th. It's been a cool and somewhat showery end to the month of September. Now, again, our water year also ending on September 30th. Here in California, we run that water year October 1st of one year all the way through September 30th of the following year. That's kind of how we gauge our rainfall and precipitation, including snowfall in the Sierra. And this is a look at the raw numbers, and it's a little hard to tell, okay, so is that good? Is that bad? I don't know, because in many places, seven inches for Palm Springs doesn't seem like much when you account that that's an entire year's worth of rainfall. It is in the desert, and it's actually almost two and a half inches above what they normally get. 
A lot of that coming in from Hurricane Hillary, the remnants that was late in the season for almost the entire water year. We kept saying, oh, Palm Springs is the outlier. They've been running below average, but then all of a sudden one storm system and they caught up. And we've actually seen a lot of tropical influence across the state of California throughout the summer season. All those originating off the coast of Mexico and then some of it making its way northward. Nothing really making landfall as a tropical system except for Hillary. And that really helped to bring up those numbers in Southern California. It was a wild August down there in Southern California. Of course, with the water year, we also like to look at, okay, where are we with our reservoirs? At this point in the season, what happens is water managers have to bring down the level in the reservoirs. That's just to make capacity and availability for the new water year. Not only for snow melt, but a bit of runoff, especially early in the season, we tend to get a bit more runoff coming down the hill. So this is a look at, and I should say runoff down the hill, meaning lower elevations, not snow melt. That doesn't come until about April. So our major reservoir conditions, Shasta still at 73% full. That's 131% of average. Oroville, 136% of average. Impressive numbers there, 73% full. 68% full for Folsom, 135% of average. It's really interesting when folks head out to some of these reservoirs this time of year and say, oh my goodness, it's so low, what happened? They have to they have to do that for the guidelines and really the rules that say you cannot keep that reservoir all the way at the top because if you get a big storm early in the season those tend to be warmer storms that all runs down the hill and then unfortunately you got no capacity in the reservoirs to hold that so they really have to bring down those levels to a reasonable amount. They don't want to let too much out because you never know what the next water year will hold, but they try to kind of gauge what's going to happen here. 142% of average for New Malonis, 123 for Don Pedro and San Luis. Really a big winner in this past water year, 190% of average, 81% full right now. They're keeping that a little bit higher. So this is just Shasta. I did want to show you just what that means when they're letting water out. This is where we started off for the water year, well below average, with some historic lows in some of our reservoirs as we were coming off a period of drought. And then we started to see those big storms coming through, starting off just after Christmas and then really ramping up around New Year's. That brought those levels way up here, almost to total capacity. And then what happens during the late summer, water levels really start to go down pretty rapidly here. Here's the blue line that shows traditionally this is the average, and this is almost every year. The reservoir managers will bring those up to where they uh, can hold all the water, and then they'll start releasing in preparation for the new water year. This water year is going to be really interesting because it is El Nino, so we're going to go into that a little bit, how that might unfold. Typically, this is what we see in average rainfall for Sacramento. And it really starts to go up in December, January, February. Those are our three biggest water months for us. March, we sometimes get a miracle March where we get a big blast of storms coming through. After that, it really starts to taper off. April, May, by June, we're basically down to nothing. And then you can see what happens in August. We're down to about five one hundredths of an inch of rain. This year, as I mentioned, El Nino is really showing some strong presence in the equatorial Pacific. And typically what we'll have is a wetter than average Southern California, warmer through the Pacific Northwest. And that picks up sometime in the month of like November, December. But it looks like we're going to have a delayed response of El Nino conditions picking up. Here's our sea surface temperature anomalies. And this is the area that I'm talking about right here. This is the warmer than average coastal waters just off of the uh, South America Peninsula, uh, the continent there. And in that equatorial region, that's where we gauge if El Nino or La Nina might be happening. It is a very strong El Nino that is showing its presence right now and strengthening continues through the winter season. It's just that a lot of the climate models are saying it's not going to be until we get into possibly January, February, and March that we see that key signature in Southern California start to pick up. So that low pressure system that we see right now, that's not really the beginning of opening the storm door. And here we go. It's going to be successive storms. This is just early in the season. Nice to see that cool blast of air 
giving us some showers and some snow showers in the high country. And then we get back to this high pressure ridge, which again will get us the warmer temperatures coming our way by the middle of the week and towards the end of the week with a very likely warmer scenario setting up across much of the West. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than what we've been seeing. This kind of position and this setup has been predominantly in the center of the country. Now we're kind of seeing some of that warmth building back towards the West Coast, but a likely wetter scenario setting up for the next couple of uh, days here, especially through, through the Pacific Northwest. So a couple more systems are heading our way, and we'll be tracking that as we head towards the beginning of October. The average last day with high temperatures in the 100s is September 15th. So we're kind of past that, although the last record high of 100 for Sacramento is not until October 10th. So it's certainly possible we could still hit 100. I don't think we're going to get that hot, though. 95 is September 28th, October 7th, 90, and 85 October 18th. So again, those are just averages. We typically can average those highs in the 80s to near 90. Now, what's happening in the high country is right about this time of year, we start to see some vibrant color happening where I just showed you pictures of snow. <laughs> well, this is what it looked like earlier this week across the high country. This is Rock Creek Road. You can see a little bit of golden starting to pop up, but we are delayed in starting that color change. It usually starts to descend about 500 to 1,000 feet per week, but we're just not seeing where we normally have that peak color right now, we're just on the beginning stage of that. So the highest elevations are starting to see a little bit of that yellow and gold, but the valley usually peaks in November. This is the timeline of changing of the leaves. Typically in late September, it's along US 395. We're not really seeing that yet. We're just kind of seeing a tinge of that. So it's more likely that we're gonna be seeing that in early October within the next week or so. so Probably the first, second week of October. We're about two weeks behind. So all of these that you see unfolding here are going to be roughly about a week to two weeks off of when we typically see that. But it really could be a vibrant year for us because of the epic water year that we had. We didn't really have that big blast of heat for the end of summer. That helped to keep all the nutrients in the leaves. And I've been talking to some of those experts that uh, go out and take pictures. And they say, they said, yes, we're anticipating because of the weather pattern, we could be seeing some really incredible color here right through the Sierra spine and some of the Sierra foothills, even towards the valley floor. Could be seeing some pretty incredible color. The cool temperatures overnight and the lack of access to that sunlight will kind of stop that photosynthesis process and that will help to get those leaves changing. So uh, whatever timeline it is, we are going to actually see those leaves changing before too long here. Highs will be near 60 in the high country. Tomorrow we're in the 60s and 70s down low. Across the coast, we hit highs in the upper 60s to right around 70 with inland temperatures in the 80s. Those readings certainly feeling like fall, but you can see what happens in our five-day forecast across the mountains. We start to see the warming trend. That's why I said some of that snow certainly melting off in the next couple of days. In the hills, we'll be in the 80s and even 80s for the coast, incredibly warm conditions there. Now, in terms of our 10-day forecast for the valley, here you see the warm-up, pretty evident with our uh, bars here going up to about 90, 92 degrees by Friday, Saturday, and then falling into the 80s shortly after that. It's a real quick warm-up, and then we're cooling once again. Hey, if you got an opportunity, we've got a great playlist with more weather uh, forecasts just like this. Drought updates, our wa uh, weather series, including water wasted, mega flood, our California drought series. Check it out on ABC 10 Plus. You can download that on many of your providers. It's on your TV. And uh, if you just go to the, to the weather extras, you can see all of that on there and so much more. We sure appreciate you watching right here as well.